we want to find the arc length of the spiral given by the parametric equations for t on the closed interval from zero to two. Let's begin by looking at this graphically. The graph of the spiral looks like this, and when t equals zero, we'd be at this point on the spiral, and when t equals two, we'd be at this point on the spiral. So the distance from this point to this point along the curve, or the length of this piece of the spiral, is the arc length we're trying to find. So again, if we start at this point and travel to the second point along the curve, the distance traveled is equal to the arc length we're trying to find. The arc length is equal to the integral of the square root of the quantity x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared integrated from a to b, or in our case, from zero to two. Let's begin by determining x prime of t and y prime of t. Notice how both of these functions are products of two functions, so we'll have to apply the product rule. So x prime of t is equal to the first function e to the two t times u derivative of the second function. The derivative of cosine t is negative sine t plus the second function cosine t times the derivative of the first function or e to the two t, that would be e to the two t times the derivative of two t, which is two. So simplifying, we have negative e to the two t sine t plus two e to the two t cosine t. Again, this is x prime of t, which we'll be using in the arc length formula after we find y prime of t. So y prime of t also requires a product rule. So we have the first function e to the two t times the derivative of the second function. The derivative of sine t is cosine t plus the second function sine t times the derivative of the first function or the derivative of e to the two t, which is e to the two t times two. Again, simplifying, we have y prime of t equals e to the two t cosine t plus two e to the two t sine t. And now we can set up the integral to determine the arc length. The arc length s is equal to the integral of the square root of, again, x prime of t squared. So we'd have negative e to the two t sine t plus two e to the two t cosine t. This is all squared plus y prime of t squared, which is e to the two t cosine t plus two e to the two t sine t. And again, this is all squared. And we're integrating on the interval from zero to two. Let's begin simplifying the radicand on the next slide. Let's begin by squaring this, squaring this, and simplifying. So there's no shortcut to square this. We have to put out the factor twice. Notice how we'll have four products. One, two, three, and four. Notice for the first product, we'd have a negative times a negative that's positive and then we'd have e to the four t. When multiplying the bases are the same, we add the exponents, and then we have sine squared t. For the second product, we would have negative or minus two e to the four t sine t times cosine t. For the third product, we would have negative or minus two e to the four t, again, sine t times cosine t. And then finally for the fourth product, we would have plus four e to the four t, uh, cosine squared t. Notice how these two middle terms are like terms. So we have the arc length s equals the integral from zero to two of the square root 
of, again, this squared would be e to the 4t sine squared t. And then we have minus 4 e to the 4t sine t cosine t. And then we have plus 4 e to the 4t cosine squared t. And now from here we have to square this and then finally simplify the radicand. So to square this we'll have these two factors and again we'll have four products. One, two, three, and four. To save some time, I'm going to quickly work this out. Just as before, these two middle terms are like terms, so we can combine this to three terms. So we'll add these three terms under our square root. So we'd have plus e to the 4t cosine squared t plus 4 e to the 4t sine t cosine t and then plus 4 e to the 4t sine squared t. From here, notice how these two terms are opposites and therefore they sum to zero. And then from here, notice that these two terms share a common factor of e raised to the power of 4t. So let's go ahead and write those in factored form. If we factor out e to the 4t just from those two terms, we'd have e to the power of 4t times sine squared t plus cosine squared t. And then the remaining two terms, these two terms here, share a common factor of 4 e to the 4t. So we'll factor out 4 e to the 4t just from these two terms. So we'd have plus 4 e to the 4t times the quantity cosine squared t plus sine squared t. And we should recognize the identity here. Sine squared t plus cosine squared t simplifies to one, and of course so does cosine squared t plus sine squared t. So we have the arc length s equals the integral from zero to two of the square root of, this would just be one e to the four t plus four e to the four t, which would be five e to the four t, which of course we can write as integral from zero to two of the square root of five times the square root of e to the four t. Let's factor the square root of five out. So we'd have the square root of five times integral from zero to two of the square root of e raised to the power of four t. Remember e to the four t is equal to e to the two t times e to the two t. So the square root of e to the four t is just e to the two t. So we have the integral of e to the two t integrated with respect to t again from zero to two. Let's go ahead and finish this on the next slide. Here we'll have to perform u substitution where u is equal to two t, differential u equals two dt. So dividing both sides by two, we have one half du equals dt. So I'll we'll have an extra factor of one half integrating here. If we write this in terms of u, we can write this as the square root of five times integral of e to the u, but again dt is equal to one half du, so we can put the du here and factor out the one half. If we want to leave this in terms of u, we'd have to change the limits of integration. Let's go ahead and do that. Notice when t is zero, u is two times zero or zero. And when t is two, u is equal to two times two or four. So we would have square root of five divided by two times e to the u. And again, the limits of integration are from zero to four. So we have square root five divided by two times. When u is four, we have e to the fourth minus. When u is zero, we have e to the zero. So the exact arc length would be the square root of five divided by two times the quantity e to the fourth minus e to the zero, which is equal to one. So this would be the exact arc length. Let's also get our decimal approximation. 
So we'd have the square root of five, right arrow, divided by two, open parenthesis, e, second natural log brings up e, raise the power of, four, right arrow, minus one, close parenthesis, and enter. So the arc length is approximately 59.9246 units. If we go back to the graph one more time, we just determined the arc length from this point when t equals zero to this point when t equals two. Which again would be the distance the point travels from this point to this point, as we see here along the curve. I hope you found this helpful.